Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm actually filming in my living room in my big comfy chair because I think that a video like this requires me to be comfortable and just relaxed and not really like in a studio type setting. Last year, my husband, ex-husband, and I separated in September of 2022. I was doing YouTube all the time and I kind of just fell off because I really just needed to take that time to really work on me and heal me and what's going on and what I'm going through. And so I did take that year and just really like focus on me, focus on my kids, travel. Like I just did so many fun things and I changed a lot of things that I do. And then on the 14th, of November, the divorce was finalized. So we are now 100% divorced, um, which is sad. It is sad, you know, especially when you think that you're gonna be with somebody forever and that just winds up not being the case. But I'm not gonna really get into that part today, but I couldn't, I was supposed to do a makeup video today basically. And I just couldn't bring myself to really get into the joy and the mood of makeup right now. Just because like with that going on, it's just kind of, it shifted a lot in my week. So, and I'm getting back on track slowly, but I knew that it would do that. So I thought it would be appropriate if since I'm feeling these things and I'm going through these things, I'm probably not the only one. And if you're in a healing journey, whether it be from a relationship, family, whatever, loss, grief, whatever it is, I just wanted to kind of share with you guys the top 10 things that I do or have done for the past year that have really helped me in my healing journey. We're gonna get into it, get a snack, sit down, get comfy, get a pillow, get a blankie, and just, you know, take some notes. It is a lot of help when people are like, hey, I went through this situation and these are the things that helped me. The long intro. I have a notebook. So the first thing that I do have to recommend is therapy. <laughs> Now, I literally started therapy and I haven't gone in a while, which I need to go back. Therapy is expensive, right? Okay, let's just, let's start there. I know, I'm not like, oh my God, you have to go to therapy. And if you don't go to therapy, then like, what are you doing? No, it's expensive in real fucking life, okay? I know that it's not the easiest choice, but that is my number one thing that it was helping me for a while, but it just got really expensive. So I'm trying to find a new therapist that, cause a lot of therapists don't really take all in Insurances, like I realized that some of them are just cash and it's like $200 for a visit. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't have that kind of money. What are you talking about, right? Not everybody can afford therapy, but if you can, you should go. If it's something that you think that you require, and usually during the healing journey, a therapist is gonna be able to say things from an unbiased point of view, like outside of the situation. So that's why I think that therapy is like one of the top, like, definitely top healing journey process things that you should try also please ignore the fact that i have no nails i haven't done them yet they look awful i look awful today but i'm just like going through the motions and i just wanted to be like straight up real with you guys like this is just me right now okay i'm not dolled up i'm not having a blast i'm going through it uh, the next thing is journaling i am so big on journaling. I started journaling last year and I allowed my ex to come live back at our home. He was um, staying on the couch just because he really had nowhere to go. And he had made a comment about something that I wrote in one of my books. Like I had a bunch of different books I was writing in. So meaning he read what I was writing. So I went to electronic journaling. Like he somehow found another paper that I was writing. He said he wasn't snooping. He just found it, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. He wound up finding it. And then, so I decided to go electronic journaling. He obviously did not stay here much longer after that. Um, and he wound up leaving in January. So I was still electronic journaling on my MacBook just because I felt more secure. Like I was able to lock it. No one could see it. No one could read it because some of the things that I was putting in there are like super personal. You know what I mean? Like when you're journaling, yeah, you can just do like dear diary, whatever. But then there are some times where I'm putting in like really raw, really like important shit that's in here that I just just need to get out and some people might be like that's fucking psychotic so like I didn't want my kids to like stumble upon it and you know people are nosy they want to read your journal if they find it um I have since gone back to handwritten journaling because I just find it to be more peaceful and more helpful if that makes sense I mean let me know down below if you prefer like electronic journaling versus handwritten I like handwritten because I'm very I'm a creative person so I like to like draw and add color and add stickers and just really amp it up so for journaling you basically you want to use it to reflect 
deflect. You want to use it to let go. You want to use it to track things like people track their moods, water intake, your goals, change, how you're doing. It's not just like a bunch of feelings. Like my journal is so random sometimes because it's really not like just, oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'm happy. Like there's just different things. You can find a whole bunch of different prompts on like Pinterest, TikTok, if you don't really know what you want to write or how you want to start. I like to go back in my journals and not only see my progress, but also be like, holy shit, like <laughs> I was fucked up. <laughs> there was some fucked up shit going on up in here. But I did bring some of my journaling stuff. I have a ton, so I did not bring it all. I will show you my journal. So I got this journal from Amazon and I will link it down below. It is a journal that comes with 365 pages. So you could do one page a day, but sometimes it's Y'all, I'll be taking up like four pages for a day, but it's very nice. Like it has the spiral notebook effect. It's like sturdy. This is very hard. I've covered it in stickers and these are vinyl stickers that I got from Amazon. I'll link down below too. It does come with this to close it. It doesn't come with a bookmark. So I have like a playing card in here. Sometimes I'll just have whatever. It comes with two pockets right here. One in the front, one in the back. It did come with these little tabs. I use them from time to time, but honestly, I don't use Use them very often i will show you like some of it i'm trying not to like put my business out there <laughs> it's personal i have like some polaroids in here and so it has like memo number which i don't understand it's a journal but i guess you could use it for like a business um the date and then it has like the weather it has sunny cloudy or rainy and then monday through sunday where you can circle like what day it is they're pretty thick pages honestly like they're they're pretty nice because i write with like markers and sharpie and stuff like that so one of the things i did i'll just show you briefly was i put a polaroid of myself just a funny face and then i put what are you and then I just put a bunch of different things that came to mind, like outgoing, I'm a niece, I'm brave, I'm unique, I'm chill, I'm a daughter, I'm a winner, I'm enough, I'm trusted, I'm youthful, I'm an aunt, I'm a warrior, funny, intelligent, sister, valued, focused, smart, worthy, beloved, strong, and there's like a bunch of other things. And then at the top, it says, I choose my identity, right? So that was something that really helped me. I didn't value myself, you know, without this person, what am I? I am nothing. So those were the, the feelings that I had inside here that just weren't good you know they weren't they're not good so when I start feeling less than I know that I am I look back at that page and I remind myself of all the things that I choose as my identity who I am because who anybody else says I am doesn't fucking matter because I know who I am and when you know who you are and you stand in who you are like it's just a whole different fucking feeling I can literally do a whole video or several videos on different journaling ideas and stuff like that but like y'all I I recommend journaling 100% I feel like that's my number one tip in the healing journey would be to journal because it helps you so much you don't even realize it it is to me like therapy the next one is boundaries so this is with family friends your job who hurt you what hurt you whatever's put you in this situation to where you're now in a healing journey you need to have boundaries because I feel like that's something that I really just didn't understand before I started started this like now I have boundaries right the answer is no if I don't want to do it no if I don't want to go no and I don't feel bad about it if someone wants to talk to me that I don't want to talk to you no I don't want to talk to you I'm not going to respond so especially when it comes to someone who hurt you you need to put that boundary up because that was one of the things that I feel like in the beginning of the separation I really wasn't doing and I didn't until about January 17th like specifically I remember where I was like no more vividly I remember that day because that was the I had let him my ex move back in just because he had nowhere to go and it was it was not good at that point he had crossed every boundary like he was trying to manipulate me to get back with him he was you know crying and then screaming and then yelling and it, it just I didn't have strong boundaries when it came to him so it was like January 17th and I was like you know what I can't deal with this anymore that like that's when I found out he was like reading my notes that's when I found out he had known something that had happened that like he shouldn't have known because he was going through my thing like you I can't do this I can't heal and be the better person that I need to be mentally if you are here if you are in my life if you have access to my life so I just 
nixed it. It was really hard, but those boundaries have to be set, specifically with people who are full of nothing but negative energy, who bring you down, who don't support you, who don't want to validate how you feel about things. You have to have those boundaries where you're like, you know what, you're not going to continue to make me feel the way that I do. And just cut them off. I definitely want to say it's probably the hardest of the steps that I have written down. It's one of the most important and it sounds selfish. Having boundaries I think was really hard for me solely because I, I felt selfish but you're not being selfish. You're taking care of yourself. And if that is selfish, then we're just a bunch of selfish bitches because that's what we're doing for 2024. We're fucking taking care of ourselves mentally and physically. The next one on my list, uh, number four is alone time. This one, also very hard. So a little backstory, I have six siblings. I come from a massive fucking family, okay? I don't remember ever being alone, like being able to just be by myself. You know, I had siblings, I had my mom, my dad, my grandmother. We were always around a lot of family. There was not time to be alone. And then I had my son at a young age. I got pregnant with him when I was 17, had him when I was 18. So then like I kind of shifted from like my family to now this is my family. Then I had my daughter and then me and Steven got married. He was in and out. So he was, he was gone for like two years of my younger children's lives, but then came back, whatever. So anyway, so then we obviously wound up having four kids, then the dog, then the cat. And it's just so like, there's never been a time where I could just be alone. <laughs> like I used to be filming and it was like pulling teeth to get him to just keep an eye on the kids. And I'm sorry, I, I know I yelled, that's the old me, but like, it's so frustrating. So now I just opt to not go anywhere. I opt to not go out to the bar. I opt to not go out with my friends. I opt on the weekends with my kids over their dad to just be alone. And for the first time in my life, I'm at so much peace because I can just sit and reflect and my brain is quiet and my surroundings are quiet. So I, I recommend alone time. I know it sounds lonely, but being alone and being lonely are two different things. I love being alone. Nobody loves being lonely. They're different. <laughs> You're a single parent. You really don't have that ability. I am... I am very lucky, I will say that, that he spends time with our children on the weekends, um, thankfully. There's so many feelings for those parents that are single parents, you know? I feel sadness and I feel proud of them because like, I'd be counting the days, the seconds until Friday, okay, when my kids get picked up, because they've been driving me crazy. Sometimes I need alone time during the week. It's not possible, you know, because even though I'm teleworking, my daughter, my three-year-old is still at home. Um, so what I do is I put them all to bed and I stay up for about an hour after they go to bed and I just lay on the couch and I just either read or I relax and I'm just at peace. It's not as much alone time, obviously, as I would prefer, but it, it, when you have your kids all the time, you got to pick and choose, you know what I mean? So that's kind of how that is with that, but I know that some people just really don't have that option and... It sucks so fucking bad. So the next thing is prioritize what matters, right? When you're in your healing journey, everything feels heavy. If you've, if you're in that, you know what I'm talking about. Everything feels important, you know, your health, your physical health, your mental health, your um, journaling, your kids, your house, your job, like your eating habits, your weight loss, your goals, like everything just is like, I have to do it all. You don't. You really fucking don't. And that's the one thing that I've learned is like to chill the fuck out on is like, I, I don't fucking care, man. Like I'm so in a, like, I don't, if I don't get the laundry done today, bitch, that shit will still be there tomorrow. <laughs> it will, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so I just don't stress those things. I do tidy up around the house because I have this thing where like mess gives me chaotic brain it makes my anxiety like through the roof so i pick and choose i have a planner so i have my journal and then i have a planner where i write down what i want to accomplish that day i try to mark off at least 60 to 70 percent of that list because if i don't get to the rest of the 30 to 40 i don't care i move it till tomorrow and I do it tomorrow. We can't fix everything at one time. We can't fix what's in us and also everything around us at one time, especially if you're going through like a really hard time or massive change. So just pick what fucking matters. That's just where you have to be. You have to pick what matters to you and the rest of it can fuck right off. <laughs> I don't know why I keep looking outside. It's so beautiful. Like the leaves are just falling. It's my favorite time of the year. So number six is self-care. This looks different to everyone. 
that's my dog. It really does, you know what I mean? It could be anything from massages to coffee on a Sunday outside on your patio, to reading, to praying, to journaling, to devotion, to just longer showers. Like it really can be anything. So what I recommend, this tip is, it's not something I really talk about like for a long time because I mean, I guess it is because it's, you have to cater it to you and who you are and what works for you. So I would recommend just like researching like self care ideas. And if anything, I can make another video if you want comment down below and let me know of like a bunch of different ones that you can do. But honestly, you can just YouTube it, TikTok it, Google search it, however you Pinterest, and find like three to four things that you can do a week that are easy, especially if you are a busy person, that are easy that just really take time for you. Even if it's just 20 minutes a day, it, whatever makes you happy, whatever is taking care of you, you know what I mean? It could just be putting a mask on, like a little skincare mask for five to 10 minutes, you know? But find something that really just takes you out of the chaos of the healing journey of your life, of the problem, of whatever it is. Just pull yourself out of it for just 20 minutes a day. And just, even if you're just laying there, I know some people like to like just scream in their pillow, dude, fucking do it. Like just anything. Um, I like to take walks. I like long showers. I like to sing. A real, I'm not a good singer. <laughs> do not get that fucking confused. I am not a good singer. Um, I do like to sing though. Like I put on my favorite playlist and I just be jamming up in my room and I dance sometimes. I'm not really good at that either, but it's just stuff that I like to do. And I can literally do that for 10 minutes while I'm getting dressed for the day. And boom, I just self cared the shit out of myself. Number seven is meditation. I think this could really fall under self care too. I enjoy meditating. Um, I try to do it first thing in the morning because if I try to do it at nighttime, let me tell you what happened. I fell asleep. <laughs> I was trying to meditate at the end of the night. It was like 10 o'clock at night one time. I was so fucking tired. <laughs> Just, I let go way too hard and I passed out and woke up the next day. But meditating, um, it kind of speaks for itself. But if you don't know how um, to meditate, you can always look that up and research it. It's a way to like... It, an escape almost, you know? And that's how I look at it. It's like I can empty my brain. And for those of you, my fellow ADHD people, um, when shit is going on up here, you can't stop it. It's like a train, like a, a subway, really. Like it's just nonstop at the speed of light. And sometimes like I just have to just shut it down. Um, and by it, I mean my fucking brain. I need it to stop processing things because even when I'm in bed at night, sometimes I will find that I'm trying to sleep, but my brain does not recognize that I'm trying to sleep and it'll just be going and I'll just be thinking about shit. Like I'm just trying to sleep. And it's trying to tell me what I need to do next Tuesday at three o'clock in the afternoon. It helps me release. It helps me empty my thoughts, calm the hell down. Meditating is so good for you, like physically, mentally. I highly recommend it. Get into it, research it. It's so easy to do. You just have to learn how to do it um, because if you're not, if you don't know how to basically shut your brain down, like stop, empty it, it's gotta be empty. You can't really get into that meditative state. It has to, you have to like really just... You know what I mean? So if you're good at that, where like you can just shut it down, then I mean, fuck, do that. So the like, next one is your mindset. Mm, this is gonna be one of those things where people are like, why? It's easier said than done, what I'm about to say, right? So if you change your mindset, you're gonna change so much. And this is solely focused on the healing journey itself. I would wake up after the separation had started and it was, what am I gonna do now? I'm a, I'm a single mom of four kids. You know, he doesn't really, he gets them on the weekends, but that's about as far as it goes. He might shoot him a text message here. That like, It was a fight. Like I had to fight with him to be involved. You know, he does do a lot better now. I will say that a year down the road, but it wasn't like that at first and it, everything was a fight. And it was just like, what am I gonna, every day I woke up and I was miserable and I was sad. Everything I had planned for my future was just lit on fire and there wasn't anything I could do about it. I had to just stand there and watch it burn. And then I watched this video and it was like, change your mindset, change your life. When I fucking tell you it worked, it fucking worked. Now, it's not 100%. It wasn't like I just woke up one day and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm living my best life. <laughs> 
no. There were still days where I was like sad, but I just, I changed how I woke up. I stopped dwelling in what happened to me. I accepted what it was, you know? What happened is what happened. I felt how I felt and I couldn't change it. There was nothing that I could do that physically could change what happened to me. And I don't mean what happened to me in the separation. I mean, what happened to me since I was 16 years old since I met this man. I can't take it back. And and I'm, I'm trying not to get emotional because I hate fucking knowing that. But I can't take it back, you know? All the things he's ever said, he's ever done, the things that he implanted into my brain, all I can do is fix that. I can't change what has happened. But I can stop dwelling on it. I can stop focusing on the past and focus on right now in the present. What can I do? What do I need to do right now? To, to do better, to move forward. And so during that separation at first, I mean, when I tell y'all I was so depressed, I was so depressed. Um, I would clock out of work and I would lay on my couch and I physically could not get up. Like I know people were like, what? I'm so serious when I tell you. Like I just wanted to sleep. I just, <laughs> uh. And I feel, I cry because I feel bad for the, who that girl was. I feel sorry for my children having to witness that. But like, I, I couldn't wake up. Like, I just wanted to sleep. I just, I allowed the depression and the darkness just to consume me. And sometimes I think you do have to do that for a short period of time. And then you have to snap out of it. And that's kind of what changing my mindset did. You have to face what happened. And like, that's the biggest part of the mindset change and he the healing journey. You have to face what happened to you. It doesn't matter what it was. Face that it happened. Accept that it happened. Feel that you have to feel it. Being mindful is so so much help in this journey and I never even knew how to be mindful until I started reading books and stuff and I will like put it across the screen the book that I the two that I read that really helped me learn how to be mindful of my feelings but for the longest time I always thought like you just had to just push it down just sweep it under the rug just you know move forward pretend it didn't happen and just move forward right forget about it no <laughs> Your mindset will never change because it knows, your brain knows what you've just been through, the trauma you've been through, the, the experience that you had. You have to face it and that is the worst fucking part. It was the worst part of the healing journey. <laughs> I'm so serious. Is facing it, feeling it, like you gotta feel it and then you gotta heal gotta heal but you can't heal without feeling all of it just feel it all let it rip you to shreds and then get up a changed fucking person changing my mindset was not an easy process like it was ugly but when I got up from that experience I got up and I did survive and here I am a year later everything that came out of me everything that I held in here and here that I carried in my body the trauma the experience I let it stay where it was and I never picked it the fuck back up and now I wake up and sometimes I'm grumpy I'm not telling y'all I'll wake up fucking shit rainbows sometimes I'm throughout the day I'll just feel like an overwhelming sadness but then I start to think like it's okay I'm okay. It's okay that I'm sad, but like, why am I sad? Why am I feeling this? And then I let myself feel it and I move past it. As long as you are in a forward motion, that's all that matters. Do whatever you have to, to change how your brain thinks. And I'm telling you, dude, fucking life. Like I, it's almost like I'm a whole different fucking person and people see it. I mean, people say it all the fucking time. And I'm just like, and that even like I have goosebumps. But that's even better. You know what I mean? Because not only am I feeling it and experiencing this change in me, but other fucking people are too. So the next one is manifesting and affirmations. This is pretty self-explanatory, but basically I have about 20 daily affirmations. Um, sometimes I'll make up different ones when I'm journaling, but I have a set of 20 and I read them every day. It helps with that before mentioned one where it's change your mindset. I just have a more positive mindset when I look at those. Like one of the, my daily affirmations is I am loved, I am enough. And those are things every morning, every fucking morning. And now not only do I do it, but my daughters do it too. Because that is the kind of mindset you need to have walking out the door in this world. 
that you are enough. You are loved. You are capable of having strong, amazing relationships. You are successful. And so you're not just doing these affirmations, but you're manifesting this life that you want into existence. And if you're religious, obviously manifestation is not for you, but maybe more or less, um, you're speaking it into existence, but you're basing yours off of religious and not just manifesting to the universe. So there's ways of doing it that suit everybody. But I, you know, even if it comes down to like manifestation, affirmations or whatever, people don't, some people don't believe in it. That's fine. It makes me feel better. Like, and if I can feel better, then I'm going to do better in the day. I'm going to do better in my life. So I do highly recommend that you pick like four or five. You don't have to do 20 like I do, but four or five daily affirmations and read them for like 30 days straight. I'm telling you the shit it does up here top fucking tier. And the last one, number 10, now that we've been here forever talking, but I knew it was going to be a chatty video. Exercising. Woo! So we all don't like that one. Even if you're getting up just 30 minutes a day, taking a walk outside, I've not lost a shit ton of weight. I've lost almost 30 pounds. Okay. And I've gained a little bit. I've gained a little bit back. But it isn't really about the weight loss for me in my healing journey. It's more how it makes me feel. Like, I just feel more positive. I feel more confident. I feel more like when I work out and then I get dressed up to go out, whatever. I'm like, yes, bitch. Look at me. Okay. If your physical health is good, it's going to help with your mental health. If your mental health is good, it's going to help with your physical health. They go hand in hand. Exercising releases so much serotonin in your body that, I mean, it, it can help with a lot of things. Depression, anxiety. Add it to your healing journey, baby. Add it to your journey. I'm not saying y'all gotta go to the gym for two hours like these gym rats. What I'm saying is get up 20, 30 minutes and go walk outside. Look at, you know, what's around you. Enjoy outside. Get up and move. And I know that's hard because previously what I said when I was going through that very depressive time, like even getting off my couch was a fucking problem. Okay. But you can't obviously go from getting off, like not being able to get off the couch to like fucking running a marathon. Just baby steps. Right. I think the exercise is one of my like favorite, you know, just because even if it's, if it's 15 minutes of doing squats, standing in your living room doing squats, it just helps with a lot of mental health issues. And so helping on your healing journey, I think it's going to make you more confident. I think it's going to make you feel better, look better, do better, like exercising. Whew, nobody wants to fucking do it, but it feels good. It's nice. It really, it truly is fucking nice. That is all 10 of my healing journey tips. Is that what it, we're calling this? Whatever. The 10 things that I've done um, to help my healing journey. I've been doing this healing journey for a year and looking back at who I was, I ain't that girl no more. <laughs> I am not that girl anymore. And I'm telling you, I'm so thankful. And I have so far to go. I'm so proud of my progress so far. And I hope that these help you. If you're starting your healing journey, I hope and pray for such a positive outcome for you. Know that you are loved. Know that you are enough. And if no one told you today, I'm proud of how far you've come. I'm proud of you. And keep fucking going. Like life just man, when you heal, life is just different. God, that's when you, I feel like when you truly live is when you've healed from something that was sent out to fucking break you. I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, guys, I love you so much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.